contributed to your spiritual walk in some type of way. Um, I just pray that you're blessed in every sense of the word. Uh, we're going to continue uh, kind of what we talked about last week. Uh, the subject matter title was, Will You Choose Uncompromising Faith or Compromising Fear? And my goal is to get down to the media and talking about the media outlets and whatnot and kind of show how they're influenced and things of that nature. So I'm going to take you on a journey. So I hope you have your Bibles with you um, because those that have heard my teaching before, you know that you're going to need them. Uh, without further ado, I'll get started here. It's a topic that I want to start off with, and it is faith speaks. Faith simply repeats the message that it hears. You know, last week I gave some definitions of faith, but uh, you must understand faith is unapologetic. It is rude in a sense. It is blunt. It is straightforward. Sometimes we have people who are straightforward. They are blunt. But, and it's not that they don't have any regards for your feelings, but they're just straightforward and blunt. Sometimes the truth hurts. Well, that's the way that faith is. When it comes to any situation, faith doesn't care about the feelings that he, that he or she hurts, if you want to put it that way, if it was a person. It's just blunt. It's straightforward. It speaks. Now, I want to start off with a little, I guess, testimony thing uh, in reference to me. That was some years ago that uh, we were at a meeting, me and my wife, uh, about my son at the school. And... Uh, it was a good number of years ago. We were talking about his speech and his, you know, advancement and things of that nature. And uh, to make a long story short, faith spoke to me. And uh, I made a declaration to them. I simply said, watch in two weeks how his speech will be. Right? So I made that declaration in less than two weeks' time. His speech was, oh, it was so great. And they were marveled at it. But see, faith spoke. It wasn't me speaking. But faith spoke through me. What do, what do you mean, you may say? Well, sometimes we say things that are so bold. So bold. He can, Did I just say that? <laughs> That's how you know that faith welds up in you and it speaks. See, it just uses your voice. But faith is speaking. All right? So faith speaks. What does it speak? It simply speaks the message or it repeats the message that has been hearing or you're still there now let's look at some biblical examples of that um, for those of you that have your Bibles if you would turn with me to numbers chapter 13 and we'll read verses 30 through 33 once again numbers chapter 13 verses 30 through 33 and this is beautiful and I'll give you a little background maybe while you're messing with your tablets trying to get there or whatnot but uh, we know that Moses sent 12 spies out to spy out the land of Canaan right and um, you know he told them to go up southward through Negev all that type of stuff you know he's giving them directions and uh, he told them something he said bring back some fruit of the land see fruit what does he mean that's evidence and I told you before that faith is evidence, but it's inward evidence. And I told you, you always have to present your inward evidence in whatever case that you're in. The prosecutor is always lined up against you. Do you remember that? So, and Satan is the prosecutor, all right? But you must present your evidence, your inward evidence in any circumstances or crisis that you face, all right? Now, so just a little background. I'll pick up my reading here. Now, it starts off at verse 30, and it says, Then Caleb... He quieted the people before Moses. Now, you have to understand here. Sometimes you have to drown out the noise. <laughs> all right? See, faith can drown out the noise. Sometimes you have to drown out the noise. And in other words, sometimes you have to have selective hearing. See, what's going on in the world today? We're addicted to the media. We're listening to the media. We're listening to that. And we're listening to that. But sometimes we have to drown out the noise. Sometimes we have to allow faith to speak. Do you understand here? And Caleb, he says, he quieted the people. See, the media doesn't just, uh, how can I say this? 
the media is just not the media outlets that we have. But sometimes it's relatives in your own home. Sometimes it's relatives within on your family. Why? Uh -huh. Because they come with the negativity. Yes. You see, faith is not negative, but they come with the negativity. So you must silence them also too. You must have selective hearing. I think some of you women might say, well, my husband has selective hearing. And I would say, guess what? Sometimes you do too. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is we must have selective hearing. We must control what we hear. We yeah. must control what we allow to come into our system. Are you still there? Amen. All right. Now he says, let's go. I mean, he says, let's go up as, at, at once and take possession, for we are all able to overcome it. Now, you must understand that you must become the modern day Caleb in a sense. Why? Because you must exercise faith. Do you understand? You must be the encourager of sometimes maybe your church family or sometimes maybe your household or whoever you come in contact with contact with maybe at work but you need to be that encourager you need to have the attitude of Caleb do you understand here see think about it here Caleb was the only one that spoke by faith or faith spoke through him but the 11 other spies what happened they were fearful so what happens there automatically the spirit of division comes in why because Caleb is over here with faith and then the rest of the 11 spies are over here with fear. So you must, you must, you must have the attitude of Caleb and be the encourager that everyone needs you to be. Absolutely. All right. Now, I'll go on here. Let me finish reading this here. He says, look at verse 31. He says, but the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up, up against the people for they are stronger than we are. Now, that's an evil report. And that's a bad report. See, when you have faith welled up in you, it won't allow you to bring back a bad or evil report. But fear does. I say again, when you have faith welled up in you, it will never allow you to bring back a negative or bad report. Absolutely. Are you understanding yes, it? Yes, yes, yes. See, the news brings us, brings us a lot of negative reports. And that's their, that's their job, but we'll, we'll get to that later. But faith will never allow you never allow you to bring back a bad or a negative report. Are you still there? Now, it says here, we're not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report, as I just stated, of the land which they had spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. In other words, it's a, it's a beautiful land. It's a massive land. He says, and all the people who, whom we saw in it are men of great stature. He says, all the people, okay, of great stature, my bad. Verse 33, it says, then we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak came from the giants. And it says, we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so were we in their sight. No matter what crisis you face, no matter what giant you face, you can uh, never see yourselves as grasshoppers. If you see yourself as a grasshopper, you will take on that mentality in your mind. That's right. And at that moment, that giant has just become bigger than you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, it doesn't matter the size of the giant. See, biblical days, at once upon a time, they were, they were won wars with physical giants. But then spiritual giants came on the scene. And that's what you must understand. Never see yourself as a, as a grasshopper. Okay? Never see yourself that way. But you must always see yourself above the battle line. Or you're still there. Faith speaks. Faith speaks. We've seen Caleb. He stood by himself. Sometimes you may have to stand by yourself. Sometimes nobody else may not have the faith to stand with you. But you must stand by yourself as Caleb did. Why? Because faith speaks. That's right. All right. I'll go on here. Oh, dear. One thing I want to reiterate though you must understand that you must take possession of your land of the world you must remember God gave the world to you right he gave the world to you you inherited the world he gave it to you so no matter what curve they're trying to straighten out or whatever the case may be and level it out nothing can happen without your permission this That's is it. your work so nothing can happen without your permission it's gonna, no matter how much social distancing and things that we do, it's gonna take an act of God to get this stuff out of here. 
or you're still there. Absolutely. That's why I said nothing can go on without your permission. It doesn't matter what they do. See, they only see things from the physical standpoint, but I told you life is spiritual. That means that we see it from the deep end. Do you understand? Man. That's why we compare spiritual things with spiritual things as we talked about last week. But you must do something because the power lies in your hand. This is your world. This is your household, so to speak. And nothing can go on without your permission. All right. Now, let's look at David here. Let's turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 32 through 37. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 32 through 37. We're still talking about faith speaks, all right? Now, who? okay. Verse 32, it says, Then David said to Saul, Well, I'm taking you too fast. Let me allow me to back up a little bit. We know we've read this and studied along this lines when David uh, fights Goliath. And... Um, his father told him to go take some food to his brothers who were in the army, in Saul's army. And uh, they were all afraid. Everybody was afraid of this big Philistine guy. Everyone was afraid. Nobody wanted to face him. And that's why I say wars were won, won with spiritual, I mean, uh, physical giants at that time. But no, nobody wanted to go to war with this guy. Uh, nobody wanted to try and defeat him. But we had a man named David who had the spirit of faith just like Caleb. All right, so that's kind of the background here. Now we'll pick up our reading here. Now, then David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Now he's talking about Goliath here, all right, because he knew everyone else was scared. They were fearful, all right? And he says, your servant will go and fight with this Philistine, all right? And he says, and Saul said to David, you are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth. And he a man of war from his youth. Oh dear, I like the faith of David. He says, but David said to Saul, your servant used to keep the father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by his beard and I struck and killed it. He says, your servant has killed both a lion and a bear. And the uncircumcised Philistine, he says, will be like one of them. He says, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And he says, and Saul said to David, go, and the Lord be with you. In other words, David was saying, Saul, let me go beyond the battle lines. See, faith speaks. It does. He wasn't worried about the circumstances. He wasn't worried about how big the giant was. He went up to him with a sling and a stone. This man was a, as I said, it was a, he was a warrior for, for, from his youth. But David didn't think about that. And that's what I tell you. Faith doesn't think. It has no feelings. It has no emotions. It just reacts. Exactly. It does. It has no feelings or whatsoever. It has no fear. It just right. does. And that's what faith does. It responds. Last week I told you. It is a response. It's a response of the human spirit to the oh, word yeah. of God. It responds. David heard the word. He believed the word. And his faith just responded as a result of it. Faith speaks. But listen to, to the faith of David. You have to understand what he's in. He says, I'm not worried about this giant. He says, I can defeat him. See, sometimes you got to remind yourself of your past victories. Uh -huh. See, that's what a lot of people in Christians don't do. Sometimes when they get into a crisis, when they get into a situation, but you must look back. You must look back and see what God has brought you through. See, that's what David, he says he was reminding himself. What also was he doing? He was charging up his spirit. And that's what he was doing. Because see, when you dwell on victories, it'll give you strength to fight the next one. Ooh, yeah. That's what we must do. Ooh, yeah. All right. Now, oh boy, hope I'm not taking you too fast here. Now, I have a question for you. How? How did David approach Goliath? How did he? How did he? How did he approach Goliath? Well, we know the Bible says he walked up to him, but see, he really didn't walk up to him physically, even though that's what you saw. But see, he walked by faith, as 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 tells us. It says we walk not by sight, but by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. All right. So that's the way he walked up to him. So he walked up to him, he came up to him, and he approached him by and with faith. 
What am I telling you? Every situation that we come against, every giant that we face, every crisis that we face, we must approach it Ooh, by faith. Yes. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. getting excited. Oh, here. I am too. I say okay. it again. Every situation, every crisis, every giant that we ever face, any situation that we come in contact with, anything, the circumstances that doesn't mean us any good, we must approach it by and with faith. That is the only way. Not by fear, but only by faith. Oh, boy. Ooh, that's good. All right. Yeah. Now, oh, boy. Another question for you I put here. How do I get the faith of Caleb and David in which my faith will speak? by listening to the right source and channel because faith or fear will both come from hearing depending on what channel you are tuned into. Mm. Are you still there? I'll read it again and I better go on here. I said, how do I get the faith of Caleb and David in which my faith speaks? All right. This is by listening to the right source and channel because faith or fear will come, will both come from hearing depending on what channel we are tuned into. What's Stay with me here. All right. Now, I just want to introduce you to something else. I have another subject, uh, subtopic, I will say. It's called Faith Comes by Hearing When Tuned Into the Christian Network. That's Where good. did I get that from? <laughs> well, I'm trying to get you in the understanding of channels, of channels. When we watch TV, we watch channels. When we're listening to the radio, there are channels. Do you understand? There, are, You could say with the social media platform that we have today, there are different channels. Yes. Why do I say that? Because you have Instagram, you have Facebook, you have all t- sorts of stuff, all right? So, are you, are you with me here? Okay, so I'm trying to get you in the mind of that. So, my subject, uh, my uh, subtopic again is uh, faith comes by hearing when tuned into the Christian network. We have a lot of Christian networks today, the Word Network, all types of different stuff. What is preached on it? The Word of God. So that's why I'm saying you must be tuned in to a Christian network. Because what's on the Christian network? It is a man or woman of God who's preaching God's Word. All right? So are you still there? Now, with that being said, I would like you to turn to Romans chapter 10, verse 14 through 17. Romans chapter 10, verses 14 through 17. And I know you studied along these lines here. After all, that's how, excuse me, you obtain salvation. You know, right? Romans chapter 10, verses 14 through 17. Ah, oh boy. Okay. Now, it says in verse 14, it reads, and I'm reading from the King James Version now. It says, How then shall they call on him? in whom they have not believed. Now, you must understand, of course he's talking about Jesus here, Paul is, but he said, how? How?" Again, he says, how can they call on him in whom they did not believe? Well, you can't call on a person that you don't trust. That's right. Ooh. Right? You wouldn't. Think about it. When we uh, get things, get things done uh, at our house, maybe some handiwork or whatever, you're trying to call on someone that you can trust. Yeah. Uh, when you do other things, you always want someone you can trust. You have a best friend, and that best friend is probably someone you can trust. Why? Because you've gotten to know the character of that person. Exactly. You, 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 you understand that person. Why do you think a, a child calls on mom and dad? Why? Because they developed a relationship with that yes. person. Their character has been explained in a sense to that child. So now they know that they can call on mom or dad. Why? Because they can call on a name. And I'm getting somewhere. Stay with me here. Now, once you can trust that person, you're able to depend on that person. You know what that person's about. Are you still there? So, Jesus, think about it here. Now, he's being uh, put on trial in a sense, and he's been defended at the same time. What do I mean here? He's been on, put on trial by us before we come to him. Why? Because they're teaching us the word of God, and we're, we're trying to find out about this Jesus guy. We're trying to find out if we can trust him. We can, we're trying to find out what he can offer us. We're trying to uh, find out what he can do for us. Yeah. All right? Now, all of this is going on in our heart, and we're thinking, we're contemplating. He, he's still on trial because why? We hadn't yet accepted him. But once we accept him, we know we have salvation. Amen. But when the word of God is preached, we can call on that name. Why? Because any name, any person that calls on the name of Jesus... Thou shalt be saved. Exactly. So once we get to know him, once we have a trust in him, 
then we you know we can call on him. Oof. Oh, you're still there. Peace, man. All right. Now, I better go on. I don't want to bore you here. <laughs> now, let me go to the next part here. It says, and how will they believe in whom they have not heard? Oh, boy. I'm having fun here. Now, think about it here. He said, whom they have not heard. See, we didn't have the uh, uh, the pleasure, I guess I would say, to see Jesus in the Bible day. All right? We didn't have the pleasure to fix our eyes upon him. See, Thomas touched his finished work. Why? When he put his fingers in his hole. Do you understand? And the Bible says we beheld his glory. And then it tells us in the epistle of John, it says we've handled the word of life. They touched him. They ate with him and probably embraced him. Do, do you understand? So they, and then John says, there goes the lamb of the world who takes away the sins. I mean, there goes the lamb who takes away the sins of the world. So what I'm trying to communicate to you is they were able to see him. They were able to put their eyes on him. They were able to hear his preaching. But he's died and he was resurrected and now he's seated. But what am I saying here? So now he had to create somebody that is an extension of here, the extension, extension of him, which we know as a preacher. Are you still there? Amen. Now, stay with me here. So now it says, and how shall they hear without a preacher? Now, let me go a little further. It says, and how shall they preach except they be sent? See, you can't just jump into this. You must be called. <laughs> you must be called, all right? It's not a way where you give yourself a title, like some people give themselves title and they don't walk in that office. But you must be called into this. Do you understand? You must be initiated into this. <laughs> See, oh boy, you, you must uh, fellowship with this. And when he initiates into you, that means you have become in a fraternity, yes, right. a fraternity of divinity. But you must be called. All right. yes. A lot of people are preaching, they are not called. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, boy. But you must be called into this. All right? Now, I'll go a little further. It says, and how shall they preach except they've been sent? And it says, as it is written, as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. He says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Esaias saith, Lord, who had believed our report? And what I want to get to, and I'll come back to, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. But there's one thing I want to touch on. You have to understand, as a preacher, what is a preacher? It's a spokesman, all right? In a sense, they become God's medium, a communication uh, uh, a c c communication person, all right? They're, they're spokesmen. That's what they are. They're God's medium. What is a medium? A medium, in a sense, really is something that you communicate through. God communicates through the preacher. Uh -huh. Are you still with me? Absolutely. So now, remember, you didn't hear Christ, but you still have to hear the message of Christ. So that means that a preacher should be preaching the exact same message as Christ. So that means when you hear a preacher, when you hear a prophet, that means that you should be hearing an extension of Christ. Uh -huh. Or you're still there. <laughs> now, oh boy. So now, I want to deal with something that says faith. It comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. That's why faith can speak. And I say again, if faith comes by hearing the word of God, what does fear come by? It has to be something that opposes God or opposes his message. God is not a God of fear. Even though they fear, even though Christians fear him today. But the Bible says perfect love casts out fear. It casts it out fear. All right? See, let me say something here. I think it's in Romans 6 and 23 where it says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. All right? Now, think about it here. A lot of Christians only see one side of that verse. They only see, oh, but the wages of sin is death. All right? But that's for sinners. Do you understand? What is it saying here? Well, let's put it to you like this. If sin was a person, that means sin clocked in, all right? And he clocked in, and when he committed his act, he was paid death. That was his wages, death. Okay, we could say Adam, he sinned at the beginning. And all men have what? All men sinned because of his sin, all right? So now, when it says on that side of the verse, it says the wages of sin is death. It's talking about sinners. 
But as I told you before, you're no longer a sinner. But see, that's the only thing that Christians see. Oh, I'm going to die in my sins. And I think I said it a couple of weeks ago. You cannot die in your sins. You cannot die in your sins. What am I telling you? That part of the verse brings fear. Okay, and sometimes because of that fear, they never go to see the other part of verse. But the gift of God is eternal life, all right, if you believe in him. So it's not talking about you. And what I'm saying, fear can come by hearing, but also faith can come by hearing. All right? All right, now, I'll go on. Now, when it talks about faith comes by hearing, that's a double, double portion. Now, here, it simply means that uh, it's talking about salvation, all right? Because if you hear the word of God and you believe in Christ and then you confess that Jesus is Lord, I mean, you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, then you become saved. All right. But the beautiful thing about the Bible is that is just a principle. Because what if we need faith for healing? Oh, yeah. What if we need faith for finances? What if we need faith for the wayward child? Do you understand where I'm going? And that means anything that you're going through, if you find some scriptures to stand on as your foundation, if you yeah. memorize, I mean, uh, get those uh, scriptures uh, in your spirit and you stand upon them, faith also comes by hearing. So that means it just doesn't pertain to salvation, but it pertains to anything that you could ever need it for. Oh, you're still there. Mm, All right, good. I'm going somewhere here. That's good. I better keep on going. But that's the beautiful thing about the Bible here. Now, let's flip it to Abraham here. Now, this subtitle here is Abraham always, Abraham was always tuned into God's faith channel, never changing the station. Stay with me here. I'm, I'm setting you up for something later. I say again, Abraham always tuned into God's faith channel, never changing the station. Go with me to Genesis chapter 22, and we'll read verses 1 through 12. Just say amen when you get there. I'm going to get there myself. I'll read it from here. Oh, boy. <laughs> Just say amen when you get there. All right, are you there? Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. And I'm going to read from the New King James Version. And it reads, <laughs> Now it came to pass after these things, that God tested Abraham. He tested his commitment and he tested his faith. And he said it to him, Abraham. And he said, here I am. So what is that telling you? Whenever God calls, you must respond. See, many Christians don't know how to respond to the voice of God. All right? But you must respond. You must respond. When God calls you, you must respond. Ooh, yeah. Why? Because that lets him know that you're ready for him to pour exactly. into you. You're ready to receive the instructions. Or you're still there. All right. I'm scared. Now, he says, Abraham said, here I am. Then he said, now, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love and go to the land of Moriah. He says, and offer him there as a burnt offering, oh my God, on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Now, stop there. You see, he's giving him instructions, all right? Now, he says, so Abraham rose early in the next, I mean, in the, in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went on the place of which God had told him. What did we just witness right there? Faith without works is dead. Do, do, do you understand here? Now, he told his man to do something. See, a lot of Christians say, oh, I have faith, I have faith. Just because you talk about faith doesn't mean that you contain it. Just because you talk about faith doesn't yes. mean that you exercise it. Amen. You see, what right. am I saying here? It says faith without works is dead. That simply means, if you have faith, show me your works. That's Meaning, right. your works should be an extension, or they should complement your faith. That's right. Oh, boy. Oh, that's good. He, he told Abraham, he says, go and sacrifice your son. He says, I have faith. He says, okay. He rose up the next, I mean, the next morning early. Why? To co complete this mission. Those were his works. Those were his actions. And that's why faith without works is dead. Can you see that? That's right. But it's an extension of your faith. It complements your faith. If you say you believe in healing, okay, well, where is it? Where is it? Well, what's, what's your action? What's your action? Lay hands on yourself, whatever the case may be. Why? Because it is an extension of your faith. Are you with me here? All right. Now, oh, boy, I better go on here. I'm, I'm getting a little excited. I wish I could have you another hour and a half here. Now, it says, um, where was I? Okay. 
It says, okay, place of God, which God had told him. Okay, verse 4. It says, then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young man, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. Everyone can come up. Oh boy. Everyone cannot go with you on your journey of faith. That becomes a stopping point. Now, think about it here. Uh. Oh, boy. See, you must understand that your faith can never take you further than your spiritual understanding will allow. You see, what did Abraham do to his servants? He sort of put up a spiritual stop sign, so to speak. Do you understand? See, your spiritual understanding, it confines you to a certain altitude of faith. You better get this here. See, <laughs> your spiritual understanding, it confines you to a certain altitude of faith. Think about it. Okay. Abraham was about to go up the mountain. Do, do you understand? He was going to a higher altitude of faith. He was going into a deeper realm of faith. Everybody cannot come with you by because they're not ready to go into that exactly. deeper or the higher realm of faith. So he says, stay here. Do you understand why? Because they lacked the spiritual understanding. See, they could not understand what he was about to do. See, he was about to sacrifice his son. Do you understand why? Yeah. Because faith without works is dead. So he was about to exercise his actions. So he says, you stay here. Why? Because they could not fathom what this guy was about exactly. to do. Because he exactly. was about to exercise his faith. Yes. So I say, everyone is not meant for you to go on your journey. Even Lot was not meant to go on the journey that right. Abraham first took. Do you understand? So don't. It doesn't mean it doesn't. Don't don't allow it to bother you when everybody when you step out in faith and people halt their journey because they're not quick to go with you. Oh, you're still there. Whew. Now, oh boy. Let me keep reading here. Now it says, oh, where did I go? Stay with me here. I'm gonna find it. Okay. And it, okay, stay verse six. Okay, so Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on uh, laid it on Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, "My father," and he said, "Here I am, my son." He says, "Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering?" Oh my 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 my! In verse eight it says, "And Abraham said, My son, God will provide." For himself, the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac and his son, I mean his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand. That's another. You see, faith without works is dead. That is another. Why? Because he was told, then he left, then he was about to do it. So that's another action of his faith. It complements his faith. Can you see that? Now on the wood, and he stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord, or Jesus, uh, it appeared as a Christophany, or some say theophany, meaning he appeared before he was incarnated to the Virgin Mary to be born and come into the world. That's how he appeared in the Old Testament. Oh, you're still there. He appeared to Moses also in the burning bush and the other encounters within the Old Testament. But that's just, I thought I'd throw that in there for free. Now, he <laughs> says, uh, but the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And basically, he tell him he didn't have to do what he was about to do. Why? Because he didn't have to do to his son what the, our father was about to do to his. That was the only sacrifice that was going to be sufficient. But he was testing Abraham's commitment or faith. Question, has your faith and commitment ever been tested? And if so, what did you do about it? How did you react? How did you react? What did you do? Did your acts complement your faith? Or did you have, say you have faith, but you never showed your works? Which one is mm -hmm. it? Only you can answer that question. Good. All right. Very good. I better go on. Now, let's take you back to the beginning, to Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 here. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. I feel like shouting or something right now. <laughs> It's good. Now, this sub subtitle here is the first channel Satan used in which man tuned in to. That's beautiful to me. The first channel Satan used in which man tuned in to. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Oh, dear. Get this now. Like I said, I'm trying to take you on a journey. 
talking about channels because I'm setting you up. It all makes sense. I'm trying to run it together, walk it down so it can make sense. Uh, Habakkuk said, make the vision plain that you may run with yeah. it, okay? And that's what I want you to do. <laughs> all right. So Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Now, have you ever studied along these lines? I'm sure you have. It says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Now, one thing you must understand. Demon possession took place here. Not in the New Testament. It took place here. Why? Because he possessed the serpent. Do you understand? He possessed the serpent and he used him for his good. Do you understand? See, Satan is great at using his tools. Do you understand? See, he's not in love with the tool. Ooh, but he's good. in love with what the tool can do. Yes. See, a man, he, he may be fond of a tool, but he's never in love with the tool. But he's in love with what the tool does for him. Why? Because it allows him to carry out his work. That's what happened here. Oh, you're still there. Oh, that's good. You get that. That's so good. he's never in love with the tool. All right? That's why he uses you as a tool. And then he spits you out. Well, because he cares nothing about you. But he's also just concerned what the tool can do. The mission that it can accomplish. All right? Now. So. Now. Oh, boy. Now, he says here, he says, and he said to the woman, and he said unto the woman, yea, he says, had God said, had God said, uh, ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden? It's deception here. He says, and the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had, God had said, ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall you die. T I mean, uh, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. He says, For God doeth know that in the day ye eat, ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, that's true. Now I want to read to you the rest of what I've had. I said, He possessed the serpent, so he could bring the serpent down to the ground with him. But most importantly, to be his medium or communication channel so man can tune into the station and commit the universal sin. Do you see that? See, uh. sometimes when we watch things, we don't want our kids to watch certain things. Why? Because they're influencing. We'll get to that later. All right? So this here, when they tune into the channel of the serpent, which Satan was behind, what happened? They were influenced to commit the universal sin. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Now, I said, so man can tune into his station and commit the corporate sin. Set, the serpent takes on the spirit of Antichrist as an effective communicator, according to uh, Revelation 13 and 5. Remember, he was conniving to the woman. He said, did God say? He said, surely you should not die. Now, see, he was talking about, she was talking about a physical death. And he kind of swayed her, all right? But he was more so talking about a spiritual death, but he was conniving. He kind of confused the lady, right? Surely you shall not die. But like I told you before, see, spiritual death was impregnated with physical death. Do you understand? See, ah, boy. As a woman and a man conceived, you know, by their natural resources, all right? A man provides the uh, seed or, you know, a woman fertilizes the egg. Well, that sin that they committed was a seed that fertilized the egg. It impregnated spiritual death. And then spiritual death in her womb, she carried physical death, and it was born. Do you, do you see that? So that's what I'm saying. S physical death was concealed in the womb of spiritual death. Without spiritual death, we would have no physical death. But anyways, I just thought I'd throw that in there for free. Now, after this incident, this is the first time man was introduced to fear because Satan taught him to do so. When God came to fellowship with Adam and Eve, he hid because they were afraid. Fear. Fear. The first time that man was introduced to fear. Oh, you're still there. Now, one thing I want to point out to you. You can see in here, in this verse, you can see Satan. Why? Because he's the orchestrator of it. You can see the Antichrist. All right? Why? He's the beast. And you can see the false prophet. Why? Because he gave her false information. You can see all of this in this one verse. Mm -hmm. What, Just like you can see in Genesis 1, if you read verses 1 through 3, you can see the Father, you can see the Son, and you can see the Holy Spirit. So this is a demonic trinity here. That's what I call it. But you're looking at the triune Godhead in Genesis 1. Well, you may say, well, where is Jesus? Well, think about it. 
it introduces, it tells you that God was on the scene. Then it says the Holy Spirit was hovering over the deep. But Jesus was the word that his father spoke. Remember, he was a word that became flesh. That word, when he says, let there be, that was, was Jesus. So you see all three of them on the scene, mm -hmm. just like you see the Antichrist, the, 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 pro, the false prophet, Antichrist, and Satan on the scene here. All right? Now, I'll go on here. Let's flip the script a little bit here. I hope, hope you're still with me here. Let's talk about the psychic ability. I'll call it another channel of Satan. Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 18. The psychic ability, another channel of Satan. What were the scriptures? Acts chapter 16, uh -huh. verses 16 through 18. 16. And I'm going to read from the Amplified. <clears throat> yeah. And I'm trying to paint you a picture. These forces are still at work. The Antichrist, the false prophet, all those things, they're still at work in this verse too. All right? Stay with me here. Now here. And now, a lot of people say, well, should I consult a medium? No. You should not consult. We'll get to that. But you shouldn't. Even magic. Is magic good for you or is it bad for you? No. Because it comes from another source. We'll get to all of it. That we'll cover it. all oh, of this good. stuff here. That's all right? Good. Now. Now. Okay. Psychic ability. Another channel of Satan. Acts 16, verses 16 through 18. Now, it says, it happened that as we were on our way to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had the spirit of divination. That is, a demonic spirit claiming to foretell the future and discover hidden knowledge. What was she mimic? She mimics the office of a prophet. Can you see that? All right. Uh -huh. Now, it says, she followed after Paul and us Kept and kept screaming and shouting. These men are servants of the Most High God. Why? Because it was the spirit that was working within her. Can you see that? All right. Now, it says, They are proclaiming to you the way of salvation. She continued doing this for several ways. Then Paul, being greatly annoyed and worn out, turned and said to the spirit inside her, You see that? He says, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, as his representative, I'm reading from the Amplified, it says to come out of her. And it came out at that very moment. Now, I said, she's mimicking the office of a prophet. Now, it's false prophecy. Why? Because it comes from another source. Even though she can give you the right information, even though she can get the right of information, it comes from another source. Remember that. Why? Because the media does the same thing. We'll get to that yes, later. Do. All right? Mm -hmm. But even though, mm. even though she gives you the right or correct information, it comes or is influenced by another source, or you're still there. Oh, now think about it here. Paul never would have cast a spirit out of if it was of God. Remember, Jesus, when they accused Jesus of casting demons out by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, he says, if I'm doing this, basically he was looking at him like, are you crazy? <laughs> he says, because if I'm doing this, if I'm casting demons out by Beelzebub, that means that kingdom is standing against kingdom, and it will not stand. So that's what I'm saying. If this was of God, if this was right, then Paul would never cast out the spirit that was working within her. All right, I'll go on. I say again, that was called the psychic ability, another channel of Satan. A lot of Christians turn to these channels in the real world. Yes, I do. They, they consult with this, with yes, this type do. of medium, all right? Or you're still there. Now, <laughs> let's look here. I put the art of magic, an outward medium of channel that men could physically see, all right? The art of magic, an outward medium or a channel that man could physically see. All right. Now, I want to take you to Exodus chapter 7, verses 8 to 12. Exodus chapter 7, verses 8, excuse me, 8 to 12. I'm trying to keep my mouth moist, so I apologize here. Now, the art of magic, an outward medium or channel that man could physically see. You can physically see magic. You don't know what they did, but you can see it. That's why I right. call it that, an outward channel that man can see. All right? Exodus chapter 7, verse 8 through 12. Now, for the sake of time, I'll read through this and read what I have. All right? Now, it says, Now the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When Pharaoh says to you, Work a miracle to prove your authority, 
Then you say to Aaron, take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh so that it become a serpent. Now, that was divine. That was of God, all right? See, we wrought miracles, all right? All right, but that was of God. Now he says, so Moses and Aaron came to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord had commanded. Aaron threw down his staff before Pharaoh and his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh called, look, look here now, it says, then Pharaoh called for the wise men, skilled in magic and omens, and the sorcerers, skilled in witchcraft. You see, and they also, and they also, these magicians, the soothsayer priests of Egypt, did the same thing, same with their secret arts and enchantments. For every man threw down his staff, and they turned into serpents, but Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Ah. So, you see two things going on. One's demonic, one's divine. But you see, Satan is the orchestrator. He influences this channel. He influences this channel. Oh, yeah. Stay with me here. All right? Now, and I put many are fooled. I read this to you. Many are fooled or deceived by magic in the works to, in the world today. Just as in the end time, the ones with the mark of the beast will be fooled by the acts of the false prophet uh -huh. that he performs according to Revelations 19 and 20. All right? He's going to deceive them. That's what magic does. People are, oh, wow. Let me get to this. Instructions against consulting and watching these medium and all those things all right instructions against consulting with and watching these channels let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 9 through 12 Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 9 through 12 and I'll read from New King James Version it says now, this is God giving them instructions, and I'll read what I have. It says, when you come into the land in which your Lord God has given you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. It says, there shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter, daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjure, conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. Saul consider, con, considered with uh, Saul got, I think, is it is it First Samuel chapter twenty eight verses nine on or Second Samuel? I have to look at that. But he consulted with the medium. Why? Because the prophets would not really speak to him no more. They were not giving him any more information. So he turned to uh, one of these mediums and they pulled up uh, uh, Samuel from the dead and they contacted him. And he asked Saul, "Why did you contact me?" So that's what God is talking about when He says, "One who." pulls them up from the dead, okay? Now, and he says, for all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations, he says, Lord, the Lord God, your God drives them out from before you. Now, why does God forbid? Number one, we're opening up ourselves to spirits other than God's, and we're giving, and we're giving them permission to enter our lives. Just as the media, media opens, us, opens us up to the spirit of fear, and allows the spirit of bondage to constantly work in our lives. Yes. All right. Now, why else? We are no longer looking to God for guidance, but we look to another source. That's why he doesn't want us consulting with these things. We're turning away from the true faith in Jesus and putting our faith in something else, which is a form of idolatry. All right. Now, it allows us to practice pure disobedience towards God because he instructs us not to do so. Oh, you're still there. Now, let's get to the channels of the world, a media-connected way of life. Let's see if I can finish this here. The channels of the world, a media-connected way of life. Now, we spend so much time watching television, being influenced by the wrong thing, social media. Uh, kids are playing video games at an all-time high. They link certain things to that, anger and aggression to kids, and just so many things. But you must understand, there are forces behind this, and they're influencing it. Just think about how much you may spend on social media. True. It's a lot of negativity that's going on. Why? Because negativity sells. It sells. It does. All right? It sells. Now, let me give you some solid facts of the media. 
The media platform can arguably be recognized as the most powerful medium source in the world because of its ability to, ability to influence in the wrong direction. Now, this might blow your mind here. The news anchors, including the people who are sharing negative information on Facebook and whatnot, all right, I'm including those two, okay? They are by no means demonic, but they are unknowingly on assignment for Satan because they have focused on reporting the negative. Think about it. Peter didn't even realize that he was being used by Satan when he told when he told Jesus, right. hey, right. basically don't do this. And he says, get behind me, Satan. Just like they don't know that they're being used by Satan when they're reporting the negative stuff. Uh. Okay? All right. Now it says, even though their information is true, it can be considered as false preaching. Or you could say that they have become a false false preachers according to God's word because they unknowingly exalt the message of fear above the word of truth which allows them to become Satan's preacher, medium, or means of communication. That's what he wants. He wants to cause fear. He wants to cause fear. All right? Oh, yeah. Now, I put, God is by no means against the media, but he is against the influences behind it. See, he wants us to watch the news, why? To be in touch with reality. But he really wants you to be more in touch with him. Think about it here. When we watch the news, we see sad situations. It's always negative. But see, God wants us to stand in the gap for our nation, for our leaders, for people. Have you ever found yourself, we were watching the news, and a sad story came. Maybe someone lost a loved one or a house burned down. And you were moved with compassion, and you begin to intercede for them. And that's why he wants us to pay attention to the news. But he doesn't want the news to become your source. That's why? It. Because he is your source. Exactly. Oh, you're still there. All right. Now. Nine minutes here? Let's see what I can finish. Uh, good luck. <laughs> now, it's too good. I want to talk about the airwaves. The airwaves, the unseen forces of darkness. The airwaves, the unseen forces of darkness. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Oh, you're still there, people. Oh, yeah. It's getting good. The airwaves, the unseen forces of darkness. I may go over a few minutes. I hope you don't mind. I'm just, I'm going to try not to, okay? They're at home. Okay. They're fine. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. I'll get back. Just, nothing wrong with having a little fun. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Now, we've all read this verse before. And it's so many different things that we can get from this verse here. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. All right? We're not dealing with physical opponents here. All right? It says, but against principalities. It says, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age. It says, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. All right? And that's what we're dealing with. All right? Now, one thing I really want you to get from this, like I said, so I wish I really had time to really open it up and dig into the verse, but I, I really don't. Now, one thing I want you to get from this, we can get, I put, we can get so many things from this verse, but for the purpose of this discussion, I want you to see that there are unseen influences that are looking for any opportunity to invade your life. All right? How? Through the portal of your mind. Through the portal of your mind. All right? Now, quickly, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. That water tastes pretty good. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Just thought I'd throw that one out there for free. All right. <laughs> now, we've been here before. And it says, In which you were once walked, I mean, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. It says, According to the prince of the power of the air. It says, The spirit of who now works in the sons of disobedience. Now think about it. Jesus calls him, I think, John 12 and 31. He says he's the prince of this world, meaning ruler. Right? Remember, Satan controls a system. He controls a system. That's why he's the God of this world. Remember when he told Jesus, he says, if you bow down and worship me, he says, I commit it all to your hands. So he has a kingdom. Do you understand? Now his forces are between probably the first and second heaven. They're in that atmosphere. So that, that's what it, the Bible is telling us. They're not, but they control the airwaves. They control the airwaves. 
Think about it. I told you before, negativity uh, sells. Yes, it does. Negativity <laughs> sells. See, it's a reason that the media tells you more about the deaths than how many people have That's recovered. Right. Do That's you right. understand why? Because they have an obligation, which you must understand. They have an obligation to get ratings for that right. uh, for that news exactly. station or that radio station, Mighty whatever the case measures. may be. So they're yeah. not going to tell you. That's why I said they put the word of fear above the word of truth or the word of faith. So that's what I'm trying to get to you. When you watch the news, that's what, when I started, I said you must have selective hearing. So you must tune out or drown out the noise. That's right. Because I told you, the media, it doesn't just on Facebook or the news or whatever the case, but it extends to your family members. Do you understand right. here? So you must learn to drown out the noise. Well, you good. must silence the crowd, that's as good. Caleb did. You said, I don't want to hear. Why? Because I operate with uncompromising exactly. faith, yeah. not compromising fear. Yeah. Oh, you're still there. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. That's good. Let me go on here. No. Creatures. Think about it here. Negativity sells. When a celebrity, something goes on with a celebrity. Now, if they're doing something good, it may the negativity sells. And that's what Satan wants because if he could get the negativity over the airwaves, do you understand controlling the airwaves, then he'll get in your mind. That's it, yes. Or you're still there. Ooh. Now, <laughs> I'll say this. Satan has strate strategically been able to disrupt our way of living through the airwaves and using radio, television, social media, and the internet to influence people's mindsets if their mindsets hasn't be, been reprogrammed or renewed. Now that takes me to Romans chapter 12, verses one through two. Romans chapter 12, verses one through two. And I call this subtitle, A Renovated Mind from a Media Adopted Mindset. A Renovated Mind from a Media Adopted Mindset. Catch. Romans 12, verses 1 through 2. And it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, it says, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And it says, do not be conformed to this world. He says, you're in the world. He says, but you don't have don't to be, be one with the yes. world. Do you understand? Yeah. See, there were, oh boy, there were a lot of uh, files on your hard drive of your mind that you carried all your years of life. And that's why he says it is important to renew your mind. Why? Because you must delete the old files and put new ones on there, on your computer, all right? Because see, oh boy, those files may have viruses. Exactly. And they can mess up your hard drive. Correct. And that's what's happening to the, the mind of men. Why? Because they're programmed to fear. And many of them not programmed to use faith. Oh, you But you must renew your mind. See, if your mind is not renewed, you'll believe anything. But once your mind becomes renewed, you believe nothing but the word of God. And you act in faith. Then faith begins to speak through you. And then everybody, it, gets, it begins to be <laughs> contagious. While faith is speaking through you. That's what I say. You must renew your mind. You must delete the old files. To. You must go undergo a renovation. When a house is being renovated, they're knocking down walls and things like that, putting the things in place. And that's what you knew and that's what you need to do in the confinement of your mind. You must renew it. Or you're still there. Now. Oh boy. Second Corinthians chapter ten, verses four through five. I really wish I had time to to really break it down for you here. You're doing a great job. But I'll read this and tell you what I have here. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses four through five. And we all been here before, so I won't spend too much time on it here, because I wanna, I wanna read you one last thing and I wanna give you one good point here. But I hope that you can see how the media, it influences the wrong way. Why, because it pro it's programming us even if you know exactly. it or not, the fear. You I see, need to be open. It is putting fear over God's word. Think about it. If God wants to warn you about something, the you don't need kind the media fear, yeah. he'll send prophets. Do you understand? Or you can see him and you can see visions. You can have dreams. He can warn you about it. See, he warns us so we don't be alone. Sometimes he warns us why. So it's something we need to do about the situation. Exactly. Or you're still there. All right, Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 through 5. Give me a few more minutes here. It says, for the weapons of our warfare, warfare are not carnal, 
a mighty in God or through God, depending on what you're reading, a virgin, is from pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments, and everything high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You must bring that negativity into the obedience of Christ. When those, when those thoughts do come to your mind because of what the media say, you must bring it into subjection. You must bring it into captivity. Absolutely. Now, I want to read something to you. When a thought is untamed or not brought into captivity, it will run wild, ultimately bring it fear. All right? Now, one more thing. Oh. One always becomes fearful in their mind first before everyone ever, before anyone ever notices the signs outwardly. They hold themselves in bondage when they are led by fear. All right? But the media is influencing you the wrong way. And like I say, God is not against the media, but you need to use it for his purposes. Oh. Oh, you're still there to intercede, to change the world. Remember, I told you, the world belongs to you. That's right. And when you give it permission through your prayer and things of that nature, that's when it will change. That's when things will get back to normal. Not what they're saying, because honestly, they're giving you false prophecy right now. Well, we expect this many deaths, then yes. they change it to this. Why? That's false prophecy. Why? Because it's not coming from the correct source. Do you understand? They got people that are giving you information, but it didn't come from God. That's right. Oh, you're still there. Even though it may be truth or it may be like their assumptions or, or their projections, but it didn't come from God. But don't be alarmed by that. Don't fear. Okay, one more last thing I want to read to you. First Kings chapter 13. First Kings chapter 13, verses 11 through 22. First Kings chapter 13, verses 11 through 22. And we'll call it quits here. All right. I just want to get you. I want you to read some and see what I'm talking about and get one point from it. I'll pick up my reading. Now an old prophet d dwelt in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. They also told their father the words which he had spoken to the king. And their father said to him, Which way did he go? For his sons had seen which way the man of God went who came from Judah. Then he said to his son, saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled the donkey for him, and he rode on it, and went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak. He says, then he said to him, are you the man of God who came from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said to him, come home with me, and eat bread. And he said, I cannot return with you, nor go in with you. Neither can I eat bread, nor drink water with you in, in this place. He says, for I have been told by the word of the Lord, you shall not eat bread nor drink water there, nor return by going the way you came. All right? Now, he said to him, I too am a prophet as you are. And, the, and an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, bring him back with you to your house, and that he may eat bread and drink water. He was lying. All right? So he went back with him, and he ate bread at his house, and he drank water. Now it happened, as they sat at the table, the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back. And he cried out to the man of God who came from Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord. He says, Because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord and have not kept the commandment which the Lord your God commanded you, but you came back and ate bread and drank water in the place which the Lord said to you, I mean, which the Lord said to you, Eat no bread or drink no water. Your corpse shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. Two things I want you to get there. When God tells you something directly or through his word indirectly, always respond in faith. The old prophet represents the media. He told the prophet what to do, but that's not what God told him to do. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I'm saying put God's word, put God's word over what the media says. Exactly. Stand your ground. I understand the precautions. We already talked about that. But the media is influencing you the wrong way. Exactly. Even though they may be giving certain true information, we understand that the coronavirus is out there. All right? <laughs> we understand that. But you should not bow down as we talked about. Exactly. Exactly. You're still there. Now, one thing I really want you to get from this, and I'll close, and that's it. Don't allow the media to become your preacher or source of information. Because just as faith comes by hearing, so does fear. Uh -huh. Don't allow the media to become your source of information or your preacher. Because just as faith comes by hearing, so does fear. And when you listen to the media, it strikes fear up in you instead of faith. God bless you tonight. Thank you for having me. Let us pray real quick. 
Our Father, we thank you right now that the word has gone forth. We thank you that people even have become more knowledgeable, Lord Jesus, and they see things different, Lord. Because, see, we cannot listen to your word and remain the same, God. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your authority. Lord, I touch each and every family member all over the world, all over the nation right now. Thank Lord, me. I curse this virus in the name of Jesus. I unleash your angels. Yes, I dispatch yes, yes. them in the name of Jesus. We thank you for uh. you being you. We thank you for loving us in spite of our sins or our faults, God. Thank we you, thank Lord. you that you see the best of us when we don't see it in ourselves. In Jesus' name we say, amen. Amen. So be it.